Okay, so we're back. Hopefully it does not act up on me again. This is my third time. The signal keeps fading and it's doing like this delayed reaction, sort of like lapsed sort of situation where my mouth moves and my words follow. And the last video that I did, last week it did the same thing, so I didn't even post it because it was just like so like, it's lagging. I don't know if it looks like that on that end, but it's definitely like that on this end. So right here, what I, ooh, it's getting thick. Right now, you guys, I have this pudding. It is getting there. We're gonna add some of that good stuff now. Let's see how this turns out. So, Tanisha, uh-oh, I think you're gone. That I saw you a second ago. There we go, just a little. Hopefully that doesn't thin it out too much. So what we're doing right now is we are making a margarita pudding by using vanilla pudding, a little uh, evaporated milk, and margarita mix. That's what we're doing. And on the stove, it just smells good. Nice and limey. I think that might have thinned it out too much. Remember this? We made this ice cream on St. Patrick's Day. So this ice cream was made with condensed milk. Ow, it's hard to open up. We made this. We made this ourselves right here on Kitchen Therapy with Candy Lou. And this ice cream is so good. It's made with condensed milk and heavy whipping cream, and that's why I'm going to use it inside of this because. I need to thicken it up and I want a green color because I want it to look like a margarita. So I don't really know what putting it in here without it being softened is going to do, but we're going to find out. You don't know, you just sometimes, if it doesn't hurt anybody, you just give it a shot. I want to see what this tastes like. So you would think, look, this is real legit ice cream, guys. Look, uh -oh, look at that. I made that with my two hands. Mmm. Mm. Hallelujah. No. Mm, it's good. Okay. Mmm. It's cold. Okay. I'm gonna mix this up. Oh yeah, this is gonna work. I think we're good and I'm gonna let it sit and then what you could do is put a little salt around the rim of a cup and when you put your salt around the rim of the cup serve this margarita pudding in the cup in the glass get festive with it you know you guys get into the spirit of things when you cook for those of you who don't like to cook maybe you just gotta like get in the spirit of it you know like make your kitchen your oasis you know, stuff so like, let's say you're having, I don't know, um, chicken with pineapple. Put on a little Jamaican music, you know, a little island, a little Hawaiian music, and have at it. You know, have fun with it while you're cooking. Have a little imagination, and don't be afraid to mess up. You know, there is so much that we hold ourselves back from because we're afraid of messing up. But don't be afraid of failure. Amen to failure, but another try. <laughs> at the end of the day. We are made to accomplish and pursue incredible, incredible great, incredibly great things. And we're made to produce greatness. And we cannot produce greatness if we're hiding behind fear of failure. So don't be afraid to fail. Not even in your The worst that can happen is you gotta start over. Or you gotta eat and you have a story to talk about in the future, you know? 
I dropped some of this, this green shamrock ice cream that we made on St. Patrick's Day. I put this in here because it's made with heavy whipping cream and it's also made with, um, con with condensed milk, which is like a sweetened milk. It's really thick. And so I dropped it in this pudding concoction here because what I wanted to happen is I wanted it to fluff up more because I thinned it out with this margarita mix. By the way, this margarita mix has, has no alcohol in it at all. It's just a flavor. So I put that in the pudding and it thinned it out. So I'm hoping that adding some of this ice cream right here, well, I got to bang it. <laughs> this ice cream right here will make it fluff up a little bit more. That's my hope. And also make it a little bit more green because <laughs> it's a margarita. Margaritas are green, y'all. They are green. For those of you who don't know, now you know. Baby, baby. You know what? You hear, you know, Junior Mafia represent Baby David. I actually got to meet Junior Mafia not too long ago. Pretty cool. All right, so. I'm gonna show you right now what it is. I'm gonna let this sit. I'm gonna come back to that in one second. So here's what we have right here. Okay, so it looked much prettier when it was first done. It's funny how greens just shrivel up. This looks very unimpressive. I'm, I'm underwhelmed by what I see right now, but it's all good, you know? It's all good. So watch me plate this up though. It'll probably look better once I put it on the, in the bowl. Everything looks better in the bowl. Just drop it in there, you know? So it doesn't look much better, but it's gonna be good. <laughs> it's gonna be delicious. There we go. Uh-oh. Okay, so you just kind of toss it around in there a little bit. You guys, if you were here, you'd be like, whoa. This looks incredible, or maybe not, <laughs> but let's just roll with it. Okay, there we go. Okay, there's a lot of tomatoes in there. So this, let's see. Ooh! That's good. Now, it's a little salty. I added too much salt. You guys, go easier on the salt than I did. I was, whoo, it's real salty. It doesn't need as much salt as I thought it needed, but it's really, really good. If you're minimizing your salt intake, try to find some different herbs that you can like spice things up with. It's about taking what is what's ordinary and making it extraordinary. And you do that by just getting creative with the different flavors that you introduce. And sometimes those flavors will actually bring out the flavors that are in the food that you're preparing. So just remember that a little bit of salt goes a long way. Mm. And I do want a fork, but it's too far away. It's behind me. Mmm. Mmm. The tomato adds a nice amount of sweetness to it. Because as you know, greens have like that slightly bitter taste, but the tomato is sweet. So it's like sweet and bitter and salty. Mmm. Wonderful. So that's that. Robin, come on over. You live right down the street. So this is almost done. We're going to have this margarita pudding. So what's on you guys' mind tonight? Ask me anything. I want you guys to ask me if you have anything, a question about anything. I don't care what it is. There's, a, I don't know, a number of you on here right now. I want you to ask me. Anything that pertains to your life, a friend's life, relationships, um, food, Jesus, um, emotions, ask me anything. Tell me, ask me something. I want to talk about something good. I mean, I have a lot going on in my life I could talk to you about, but I want to know what's going on on that side of the screen. So tell me, in my house, the kitchen was the place where we gathered and we talked about important things. Growing up. It's where we stood in the kitchen before we went to school and we had heart to hearts. It's when we got in trouble and we were about to get our beatings. No. <laughs> where we'd stand in the kitchen and get that lecture. 
it's the place where we gathered and we ate together. Like the kitchen is, it's the hub. And I don't know about you, but there's always that one little hot spot, whether it's by the drawer, by, well, whether it's by the, um, the um, stove or by the utensil drawer and you're standing there and everybody wants to stand by that same drawer. You know what I'm saying? Why? There's so many other places. There's, there's this whole kitchen that everybody wants to stand right there. We had that hot spot. You guys have a hot spot? I need a favor from you. I need to bake a cake tomorrow. If you need to bake a cake tomorrow, you call me. We'll talk about it. I may have a little bit of time. Um, hi, Je Jeannie, Jeannie Marie. What was the best experience you had while cooking a great meal? Ooh. Let me think. Ooh. I have a lot of really good experiences um, while cooking meals. I'm sure. Oh, thank you, Nicole. Hold on. I'm getting right back to you, Cousin Robin. Okay. Thank you, Nicole. I made your, I made your um, sweet potato. Okay. I'm going to answer this in one question, in one Situation right here. Here we go. So, Nicole Lewis, she had posted this picture of this incredible sweet potato hash brown. And I was like, dang, that looks good. How do you make it? So she let me know what she did. And so I made one and I doctored mine up. I put like a little bit of um, brown sugar in there, some cinnamon butter and made it and it didn't stick together. And so I looked up, how do you make hash browns stay together? So I found out you've got to make sure you drain the potatoes well enough. So I squeezed it really tight with paper towel and I squeezed it with my hand and all the water came out and um, I stuck it back on the skillet and that thing stayed together perfectly. I ate it, I topped it with a little bit of whipped cream it was so good. It was so memorable. And I think it was mostly memorable because Nicole, she recommended it to me. I got it from her and I love Nicole dearly. So that was a pretty incredible meal. And that was recently. Another meal that I remember making that I loved was when I made my first chicken roaster. I made that here. And that thing was so intimidating. It was so intimidating because it felt like a baby. It felt like a little little infant. You, you just the whole, the legs are there, the arms are there, the we all that. You know, all I was missing was the head. And so that was memorable because it was out of my comfort zone. And I was able to make something that was delicious that everybody loved. And it was something I'd never done before. And I did it on here with you guys. And you guys walked me through it. It took all night. <laughs> that sucker took all night long. Like, I think we ate at like 10.30, 11 o'clock. <laughs> Yeah, it took a minute. So, yeah, that was my best experience. Any questions? Any questions? Please ask me a question. Something juicy, something good. Do you have any problems in your relationship? Is there trouble in paradise? What's going on in your world? Tell me something. Ask me something. Thank you, Jeannie. I did it myself. You guys, I did my hair myself. I um, even cut it myself. I got these clippers and I cut it and I thought I was a real beautician. I took my hair and slid it through my fingers and would like snip, would go all the way. I was doing the most. I'm just obsessed with trying to cut my own hair these days. And then this, I decided to add this because I just, like I said, wanted something different. I've been wearing my hair the exact same for like, I don't know, two years now. And I'm like, I need a little change. So this is my change. A change, change, change. So, yeah. No questions for me? Well, I have a question for you. What do you guys think? is the number one killer of relationships, huh? What do you guys think is the number one killer of relationships? Let me know. Anybody? Well, I don't know what the number one killer of relationships is, but I can tell you what I think it might be. I think it might be lack of communication and unaddressed needs. That's what I feel like the, a killer of relationships might be. There's a lot of needs in relationships, and they're not going, ooh, see, right there, right there. There's a lot of unaddressed problem. People like to push stuff under the rugs, and then the next time, the same thing comes back up again, and instead of your response being like this, your response is like this, because it was never dealt with. It has never been dealt with, so we got to start dealing with our stuff, you know, so that it doesn't back up. Now this sounds really nasty because I'm dealing with food, but oh well, I'm going there. We know when we eat food, the natural process is to what? 
it goes through our system and then we have to let it out, right? It's natural, it sounds gross, but it is so part of the natural process. When we're in relationships, it's natural. We, we take in stuff, people take in things. Well, some of those things are negative. There are some conflict in there. And sometimes we just hold it in a little bit too long. And that's constipation. And constipation can lead to long-time problems. So it's so important to let that stuff out. Talk it out. Find a solution. It's so important that we talk this stuff out. Because when we don't communicate, we literally kill our relationships because stuff starts to fester. And what could have been something that was nipped in the bud now just gets a chance to grow with your little thoughts and your feelings and everything else. Can you tell I've been there, done that, got the t-shirt, the mug, the everything? Yeah. So communication, we got to have it. What else? I wouldn't know. You haven't been in one. <laughs> Jeannie, you wouldn't know. You are so wise and you have been in relationships, just not maybe recently. So... You know, don't discount yourself. Robin, you mentioned lack of communication. There we go. Sometimes people are confused about how they feel and they don't understand how or why they feel a certain way. That is so true. We don't take enough time to really process what we're feeling. We don't ask ourselves enough questions. Like, we got to ask questions. Even as much as we want to question other people and want to know why, why did you say this? Why did you say that? Why did you do this? Why? You got to start asking yourself, why does that bother me so much? Why does that bother me the way it's bothering me? You know, we got to start challenging ourselves. If we want to grow, what they say, if, you, if once we know better, we got to do better. So once you know better, do better. So, um, you know, shoot. Next time you're upset and stuff is starting to fester, ask yourself, why the heck is this bothering me so badly? Why? And that's a good start. So here we go, what I'm doing right now is this. I'm gonna create a little salt rim because I can. I just put a little bit of salt in this bottom of this uh, bowl and it's, this isn't really working too well because, oh, it's working enough. Okay, here we go. So what I did was I created a little salt rim. I'm gonna whip this up for two seconds more because I wanna get it as low as possible. But that's a two-way street of communication. Absolutely. It's definitely two-way. You can't do it by yourself. This right here is a margarita pudding. Silence. Silence, por favor, as I pour. Hi, Saski. There we go. And sip. Just kidding. This is pudding. We will not sip. Okay, so all the shelves are too low. Okay, here we go. Shut that just so gingerly. Ta -da! Oh, mine, mine too. I got bigger actually in there. You know, I got all of my dishes. Can I show you? I got all my dishes. That tastes good. From the dollar store. Let me show you. Okay, so there's. I got the bowl. I got a whole set of those. Oh, there's, they're all in the dishwasher now. I gotta load it. Dollar store. Dollar store. Look at that. Look at that. Dollar store, y'all. Dollar store. Dollar store. Dollar store. Okay, I'm showing you all my dishes now. I even found these little guys. I love these. Dollar store. Matter of fact, we're gonna use one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna serve up some. Some ice cream for you. Okay, so here we go. Let me let me do something special real quick. Let me do something for you real quick. Yes, you do. That was a dollar, the green, dollar tree, dollar tree. Guess what it's called. So here we go. Alyssa Schultz, Shireen, hey y'all. Okay, so I got this cute little bowl right here. For those of you guys who just tuned in, we just made our dinner. It's so, super simple. Two ingredients, actually three ingredients, four ingredients. I have collard greens, let me show you. Tomatoes, salt, and pepper. I did put a little lemon in there. So, and it's very good, very healthy. Get your antioxidants in there, get your greens, get your regular. All right, so, hey Shireen, you are a newlywed, kind of. So I need you. 
And Saskia, you are um, soon to be a newlywed. What is your, oh, and Alyssa, you are. Have you got married yet? You did get married. Wait, Alyssa, have you gotten married or are you getting married? Let me know. I wanna know your best, most significant um, advice for how to get over a conflict with your loved one, whether it be a spouse, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. How do you guys work through your conflict? Go. So here we go, I'm gonna make up, while you guys are figuring this out, I'm gonna show you what this looks like right here. We have this wonderful ice cream that we made using condensed milk. Look at that. Mm, look at this, I've been waiting to do this. Get creative with it, guys. Don't get stuck. Just because you're used to having something one way, don't get stuck. Don't get lazy. Okay. I have these Pop Rock candies. Look. Mm. I'm going to put on here. I love it. I got one more. So you said lots of wine. Talk it out. Apologize. Life is too short to hold on to nonsense. I agree. What happens if you're dealing with a person, though, who doesn't like to um, let go of things? Because you know that's a reality. You have one person sometimes that wants to talk it out, another person who doesn't. What do you do with that? I have another ice cream, another type of ice cream right here, guys. Ah, this looks good. This is a cookies and cream. Yeah, I think wine, lots of wine helps. If they're really difficult, then maybe something a little stronger. <laughs> okay. Oh no, it's not, it's, this is really frozen. You guys, I want you to hear this. It's still drinking. I mean, it's not drinking, it's still popping. I agree that you won't leave the table until a result until the resolve has been made, has been agreed, excuse me, be it agreeing to disagree or compromise agreement. That is the hardest problem I have. I am so difficult with agreeing to disagree. I feel like if we're not agreeing, then we just, you know, we disagreeing. <laughs> no, but it's so mature to be able to agree to disagree. Go, listen, you're your own person. I'm my own person. We're never going to see everything, everything 100% the same way. And that's definitely part of just embracing your own individuality and appreciating your spouse or significant other's individuality. Giving them the freedom to be them and to make their own decisions and to disagree with you. I mean, it's, when has it ever been a real world for us to disagree? I think that's why we are in the place we are in because we are afraid of disagreeing. Polit we can't even talk politics with one another because if we disagree, then we're... Disagreement is normal. It's natural. We have to learn to suck it up and deal with it. Create a conflict cube. Tell me about the conflict cube, uh, Robin. What does that mean? What does that look like? Usually wait a while, then bring it up when everyone is calm and have a clear mind. That's good. I'm bad at that too. Sometimes I just want to, whatever it is, I want to talk about it right now. Because it's so important. But I'm also a great, I like to like, I do like resolve. And I, and I do, um, I'm a great listener in conflict. That one, that's one thing I think I do, do well. But as far as like waiting and being patient and all that jazz, nah. I like to talk about it when I want to talk about it. And that usually is right now. <laughs> right now. But you know, I think if you want to grow as a person, I think the best place to grow is in a relationship. We can talk all day long about being a good person, about loving Jesus, about um, serving God. But until we can really do it in a relationship, there's no proof of that, you know. Proof of us and our maturing is really in how we relate to others. It's in how we resolve conflicts. That's really where it's at. Talking always hard. Okay, talk, talk always hard to wait. I'm very impatient. It takes practice. Yeah, it's so hard to wait your turn when you're talking or having conflict. It's so challenging because while they're talking, you're like, <laughs> you wanna respond, you got, a, you got a response, you know? You wanna let them know. Shoot, you got it twisted while you talk and let me stop you. Yeah, that's how we do. That's, you know, sometimes how I do. But we just have to just wait. Do you ever think if you wait, you're gonna forget what you're trying to say? Have you ever forgotten like, 
You're sick. Here's the worst. Have you ever been on like a rampage and then like you lose your train of thought? <laughs> you try to get smart and you like go on somewhere you like, dang, wait a second, where's I going with that? Yeah, that's the worst. But it's so important to listen. You've got, I've got to listen. And listen and not interrupt. And active listening. You know, and sometimes people, they fake active listen. You know, I'll show you what fake active, active listening is. So, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. But they ain't here to worry. Active listening is showing that you're, you know, providing some sort of verbal cue that you're listening. But sometimes that's just a bunch of bull, okay? Because you're not. All you're doing is yeah, 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 mm, yeah. And my point is, we got to lay. We got to listen. So we can't be faking active listening. That's called fake listening. <laughs> Fake news though, fake listening. Someone once told me listening is learn. Oh, oh, Alyssa, you got some smart people around you. Listening is learning. Unless you're, listen, I was going to say, unless you're listening to a fool, but even then you get to learn about the fool. You, they showing you who they are. But if you're with wise people, I think you get to learn so much from them. What I'm making right now, guys, is something delicious that you wish you could have, but you can't because you're not here. So this right here is a homemade ice cream that I made with y'all on St. Patrick's Day. It's when I was waiting for that big old corned beef to finish cooking and it's never cooked. Here is a cookies and cream ice cream. Let me just give you a better view of this right here. Okay, here we go. Ooh, yum. Look at that. See all those little cookies and cream bites in there? Mm -mm -mm. Look at that. I'm just going to spin it around like, like it's price is right. Let me move that out the way. There we go. Let me see. Can you get a good view? Oh, there we go. Mm. Let me show you this other one. Now, this other one was quite fun because what I did was, sorry, I have to do a backup. And I just, what I did was this. I took these pop rocks I have right here. And we all know pop rocks are the business. Got to get back to work. Love seeing you. I love seeing you too. Mwah. Bye, Alyssa. Hi, Irene. Oh. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Here we go. Pop rocks. Okay. I'll put a little pop rocks on, on this right here. Because it's green and it matches and it just makes sense. So we have both of our ice creams right here. I want to zoom in. I need my, you know, I need an actual camera. Okay, you guys, I'm serious about doing something right now. And this seriousness is getting a clear shot. I want you guys to see what I'm looking at. There it goes. You see those pop rocks on there? Oh my God. Those are so good. So... Let's check our pudding. So we have all these desserts right here. I'm gonna stick them in. I should take a bite so you know that I know. Actually, I'll wait. I'll wait till my other desserts ready. Okay, so I'm gonna stick these here in this freezer right there. Check on that pudding. Put my, whoops, my good ice cream away. This right here, guys, is some real deal ice cream. Forget boarding. So if you can make your own, you know my theory. If you know what's in it, you're better off. Oh my God, yes, I need a cupcake. You know I haven't made cupcakes in a very long time. I haven't made them since I was back in Arizona. Not one cupcake. Not one, it's very sad. <laughs> it's sad. I was craving a cupcake two days ago, but it was like, the one I wanted was like way too far away, so I, I didn't get it. Um, you both write out methods you agree on to resolve issues. Okay, we were talking about, for those of you who just tuned in, we were cooking, making greens, tomatoes, uh, what else? Pudding, margarita pudding, and we start talking about relationships and the number one killer in relationships and how to overcome conflict and all that good stuff. So my cousin, or no, not my cousin, this is my friend Robin. She said, you both write out methods you agree on to resolve issues and put it on a cube and roll. That's creative. Put it on a cube and roll a dice. You have this dice. You have your methods that you agree on. Maybe it's kiss, maybe it's, uh, oh, you have it right here. Write it out. Write out the disagreement on a notebook. Talk it out until resolved. Kiss and discuss again. See more. 
Um, oh, kiss to discuss again in 24 hours. Address another day. Put it in the hands of the Lord. Hey, hey, Jesus. Got to put it in his hands. So, yes, I think that's great. You get a cube. You put your methods of resolution on that cube. You roll the dice and go make me a lemonade. <laughs> hey, it landed on that. Go make me a glass of lemonade, bubba. You know, so whatever it is, I think that's a great, peaceful way to resolve. Make, make cupcakes. I'm craving one now. Girl, I want one, but I ain't making no cupcakes right now. <laughs> So, but I'll make, you know, I'm actually going to have a really great recipe for tomorrow. I don't usually do back-to-back -back days, but I think I'm going to do a back-to-back -back day because tomorrow I have something good for y'all. Like, really, really good. Even if you don't, even if you cannot tune in, it is A-OK. -okay. Just make sure you watch the video later and leave a comment so I know you did and let me know what you think. But tomorrow is going to be killer. It's going to be good. I can't wait. I was researching it today on what I want it to be like. So let me check this pudding right now. This pudding. J E L L O. Let's play. Let's play charades. Who's this? Jello. <laughs> Who is that? Oh no, this doesn't seem like it's getting very solid. Maybe it's gonna be a milkshake. Maybe I should freeze it. Oh, good idea. I think that I watered this pudding down too much. Okay, we're going to put that pudding in the freezer. Okay, nobody guessed. That was Bill Cosby. Huh? Nobody guessed. All right. So, you guys, the pudding that I made is giving me like a little bit of a situation right now. A little dilemma. The dilemma is, it's not really solidifying the way that I thought it would. It's, it looks like a milkshake. So obviously, I did something really wrong. What did I do wrong? I don't know. But I think I actually, I think I do know what I did wrong. I'm pretty sure where I went wrong was I added that margarita, <laughs> that margarita mix and I watered it down too much. So I've learned next time if you guys decide to make pudding and you want to flavor it, just make sure you add uh, a couple, you know, switch up the proportion. If it says two cups of milk and you want to add margarita mix, do like, I don't know, just a little bit less milk and then make up the difference with the margarita mix. But maybe not too much. Maybe the margarita mix impacted the concoction to where now it's not going to solidify. I don't know. But we'll see. So I'm going to give it a few more seconds. I'm going to take it out, see what happens. In the meantime, I think we're going to try these ice creams. Let's see here. Let's try these out. See, here's what I'm talking about right here. I have this pudding that's just kind of, let me taste it. It's kind of loose, you know? Let me see. Oh. <laughs> Tastes good, but it's just not, I guess it is thickening up. I'm not a very patient cook. Okay, so let's try this ice cream. The pop rocks are still popping, even after all this time. Can you hear it? Okay. Now we're going to try the cookies and cream. We made this. We made this from scratch. For those of you who just tuned in, this is so wonderful right here. Mmm. Score. That's good. And now let's try this out. This is our concoction that we made tonight. Oh, hold on. Let me show you guys what I'm eating. It doesn't look too pretty in this bowl. It was pretty when it finished, but it started to wilt away. But this is a collard green with some great tomatoes that were about to go bad. They were starting to shrivel up. I want you to see this right here.
Look at that, you guys, it's gorgeous. Nature is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. I'm trying to flip this around now. Mm. I'm trying to find my angle. <laughs> That's good. You guys, it's not about the amount of money you spend at the grocery store. It's not about how much time you spend in the kitchen. It's not about how much you know about cooking. Because truth be told, I don't know all that much about cooking. I just, I do it because I love it. I love food. I love people. I love cooking for those I love. And I enjoy, I value knowing what in the Sam Dickens is in my food. So get in that kitchen, use what you've got, even if it's not a lot, make that breakfast, that lunch, that dinner, find creative ways, get online. I love to use the one website, it's called myfridgefood.com. You can put in the ingredients that you have and it'll tell you exactly what you can make with what you have. You don't have to go out and get anything else. It may not be if you want a steak dinner, you ain't got no steak, then you ain't have no steak tonight, boo. But you can have something else. Maybe you can have a green and tomato salad. Maybe you can have, um, you have enough for ice cream. You don't have enough to take the kids out for a big old cold stone, but you have some condensed milk and heavy whipping cream. Or only, let's say you have 10 bucks and you know cold stone's expensive. Go get that condensed milk, get some heavy whipping cream, mix it up for your, with your kids, put some food coloring in it. And now you have ice cream for everybody and under $5. Or maybe around $5, $6 most. So just be creative and innovative. Enjoy being in the kitchen with your family, with your kids, with your spouse, with your significant other. This is a time, it's a place to make memories. So um, get in there. Remember, don't forget the vegetables. They're not boring. Spice it up. Put something cool in there. Bring out the flavor with something else besides salt like I did tonight. I went a little too crazy with the salt. But, um, you know, just enjoy your time in the kitchen. Thank you guys for joining me again for another episode of Kitchen Therapy with Candy Lou. I'm going to go dig into these greens because, you know, as I say, there's power in the green. I don't know if they really say that, but that's the first thing that came to mind. <laughs> there is power in the green, though. There is power in the greens, y'all. It's superfood. I have an idea. I... I'm gonna share the idea next time though. I'm gonna hold it and I'm gonna share it next time. Hey, Charlie, thank you so much. Anita, hi. I can't wait to meet your twins in person. Melissa, what's up, oldie but goodie? Mr. Ron Willis, I want some brisket. And Jeannie, thanks for laughing at my jokes. <laughs> oh God. All right, it's been real. I love you guys. I'm gonna go eat up all this ice cream and then go watch TV or something. <laughs> Until next time, God bless you. Eat up.